What is the religious landscape in Dragon Age? You've got the main human religion, which is uh, headed up by the Chantry. It's the sort of cult of Andraste. You've got the the Elven pantheon. Um, the I think there are seven creators in the Elven pantheon. Uh, you've got the Dwarven religion, uh, which centers on the stone, and you've got the Cunari. Uh, religion, a sort of philosophical religion, which is basically um, sort of Confucian in flavor. Uh, not obviously theistic, more focused on sort of social roles and social norms. That's, these are the sort of main religions on offer, and then there are variations under each of these uh, religious traditions, different sort of sects, uh, different uh, heretical groups, rogue groups, just different variations among uh, the, the communities that live in this universe. And one of the really fascinating things about the way that Dragon Age handles religion, I think, is to watch the interaction between these different religious communities. Um, because you have the one main major tradition, um, the, the Chantry, um, the cult of Andraste, the human religion, which is the biggest because these are the folks in charge. I mean, they're politically dominant um, because this is a religion claimed by the, both the Tevinter Imperium uh, and by the Orlesian Empire. So there's sort of the sort of broadest political scope. Um, the, the Chantry is also the sort of most important force, the sort of most widely felt influence uh, in the game because it is the only evangelical religious tradition in the game. It's the only one that really reaches out and tries to make new converts. Uh, and that's a whole thing that we can get into a little bit later. The other traditions are mainly contained to the communities that hold them. I mean, it's the dwarves follow dwarven religion. The elves follow their elven gods. The Kunari follow the Kunari code. Um, and they, so they're a little bit more circumscribed in the specific communities that uh, they occupy and within which they grew up. Uh, but one, what you can see is you can see how some of these religious traditions have had to adapt and change because of contact that they've had with other religious traditions in the same space. I think this is most pronounced with um, Elven, with the Elven religion, because the Elven religion has this, this idea of this pantheon of creators, these seven creators. Uh, but sometimes, I, I, my, my sense is, my understanding, and I don't, I don't have um, quite the same depth of grasp, there's not quite as much lore around the Elven Pantheon as there is around some of the others, at least in Dragon Age Origins, which I mostly have in mind here. Uh, there's not quite so much lore about the Elven Pantheon, but there's some sense that the Elven Pantheon sort of interacts with the other gods in the world. Uh, there's, there's even a sense in some, of, in some cases that the elven pantheon were themselves created. They sort of give the gifts to the elf. They are the gods for the elven peoples. But, uh, but there's some sense that maybe there was a god before their pantheon. And maybe that was even the maker. Uh, so there's, uh, which is the, the sort of the, the divine figure uh, that the Chantry worships. So there's some, there's some record in the elven lore that maybe the, the elves have modified their own stories, have changed their own, their own religious traditions over the years as they have lived sort of under the shadow of the Chantry and have had to make sense of how their mythology uh, combines with, is related to other mythologies. There's also some, some idea in the Elven Pantheon that, that, the, that the creators were sort of one sect of gods that were maybe at war at some point in the past with another sect of gods, the old gods, which are the gods, uh, the sort of the, the pagan gods that Andraste herself, uh, the sort of main savior figure that the Chantry worships that Andraste, her, that Andraste herself had to break from when she sort of returned to the Maker. So, so it's really fascinating to see the way that the Elven religion has had to respond and, sh and reshape, synthesize itself 
uh, with some of the other religious traditions in the land because they've been a subjugated peoples in this broader land for, for quite so long and have lost touch with some of their original religious sources. That's just one example of the kind of interplay I think you see between some of these different religious traditions in the world that has been built in Dragon Age. Another really interesting example is um, there's a storyline, and I'm forgetting the name of the characters now, but there's a storyline in Origins where you have to decide whether or not you're going to help a dwarf um, set up a new chantry in Orzammar, uh, where there never has been a representation of the chantry before, and the dwarves who have never, uh, who have never worshipped uh, Andraste, have never worshipped the Maker before. Whether or not you're going to help, basically, the chantry colonize this religion, this 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 community that is up to this point uh, sort of been represented by a different religious tradition. So you get thrown into the middle of this sort of conflict um, and and overlap intersection between different religious traditions that haven't had a lot of contact, have lived uh, in a certain kind of tension with each other, and you have to decide whether you're going to sort of stand with the sort of dominant colonial religious power uh, who's trying to bring. Their, the message into uh, a, a sort of new community, a new space, um, which, is, which is something that happens all of the time in the history of religions.